Hello everyone, welcome back to The Homegrown Artist. It is gloriously rainy outside today, so not a lot of work can be done out in the garden or just out and about. I like to take these kinds of days to really dig into my herbalism study. These are some of the herbs that we have been trying to let dry, which is very, very difficult because all of the weather lately has been nothing but humid moisture and every time we put them out to try to sun dry them, it starts to rain. We've got a couple of different things that we are trying to decide what to do with and how to prepare and in doing so I am doing a lot of my research on these herbs and really trying to build that into my Materia Medica, which I will talk about later on. But first, let's take a look at the herbs that we have. This is our herb dryer that we are using. My sister and I got it for my mom for Mother's Day and we have been very pleased with it so far. It came handmade from a creator on Etsy. It has our little farmstead name engraved on it and it's got so much room for so many different things. This was the very small harvest of calendula that we have. Then we have some mullein just all over the place. We have our chamomile over here and we have some curly dock and then some elderflower. Um, now, unfortunately, when we first put the elderflower in it and set it out in the sun to dry, like 30 minutes later, it started to rain. So all of the elderflower got soaked. And then each time we try to put it out in the sun, it starts to rain. And I don't know if it's just our timing or if it's just how it works. This is our lot in life. But these are the herbs that I'm really focused on researching right now because I want to know how we need to prepare them and what they can be used for and what not to use them for. So these are the main books that we use. I think we have some other herbal medicine or herb books in the house, but we don't typically use those uh, as much. So th these are the main ones. One of the tips that I will give you if you are starting to go into this is to know why. <laughs> I do think it's important to know first and foremost why you are wanting to study herbalism. Why are you wanting to study this subject? Because that is going to influence and kind of dictate the resources you will actually need and how you approach studying this. If you're just interested in it, sounds cool, and you want to learn a bit more, or you want to study it professionally and maybe get into, you know, professional herbalism or medical herbalism, or if you want to study it and use this knowledge to benefit your health and your body and, you know, your family as well, then those those goals, having a goal will help you decide what resources to access first because, you know, not everyone needs to pay for a course, not everyone needs to buy all of the books that they can get their hands on. It largely depends on just what you need and what your goals are. So once you know that, it is a lot easier to approach. There are a lot of books out there. These are just the basic ones that I use, the ones that I keep going back to that have a lot of good information and a variety of styles that help me put together my herb profiles in my Materia Medica journal. The first two I'm going to talk about briefly are really excellent beginner books. They have more information beyond just the herbs and what to use them for and how to use them. They give you information about how to grow your own herb garden, uh, where you might need to grow, where you can find, if you can't grow your own garden, where you can find and resource good, reliable herbs to use. And they also go into tincturing and making salves and the process for making a lot of the things that you use the herbs for. So this one is the Homesteader's Herbal Companion by Amy Fuel and Rosemary Gladstar's Medicinal Herbs, A Beginner's Guide. They have a lot of good information for people that are new to this. Condensed into one place can be a very good diving board into the rest of this information. The next one is Rosemary Gladstar's Herbal Recipes for Vibrant Health. This really just has a lot of recipes and goes over a lot of the vocabulary for knowing how to process whatever herb it is that you're using, what it's best used for, the different mixtures you can use for specific ailments or illnesses. We have the Modern uh, Herbal Dispensatory. I actually did not realize it was dispensatory at first. I thought it was dispensary and then even after I'd already gotten the book and read it, I have only in preparing to make this video realized that it is dispensatory. Did not know that was a word. Now I know. But this, this is 
really focused on the actual medicine making. It goes way in depth into the process, a lot of the terms as far as energetics, and how to refer to different effects that the herbs have on the body. It is a lot more sciency and has some recipes in there as well for specific things. It is a very comprehensive guide for medicinal herbs. Then we have the Encyclopedia of Herbal Medicine. In the very beginning of this book, it goes into the history of herbal medicine and a lot of the key figures as it progresses throughout time and the different regions and areas of the world and cultures that use this and some of the places that certain practices originated. So that's really interesting to know. But on the inside, it has what research is linked to each herb. Now it doesn't have the recipes for the herbs that it's talking about, but it has recommendations for ways to use them and dosage recommendations. It just doesn't have the recipes. It talks about the traditional usages, the ways to identify it, how to um, know what parts of the herb to use, and it is very encyclopedic. On the subject of courses, I have researched and looked into a lot of them. There are not any that I am taking part in right now. I would like to, but I, quite honestly, I don't have the time or the money at this moment to dedicate the appropriate amount of effort that I would want to dedicate. And I wanna save that money and make sure that I am investing all of the effort that I want to, to, to take this seriously, because I wanna take it seriously and make sure that I'm making a good investment with my time. Some of the courses that I've looked at, you only have access to the course for a certain period of time. And the way my life is right now, I am hesitant to do something like that because I probably would not finish it within that time. And I wanna do it the time when I'm gonna have time, you know? There are a lot of free resources though out, out there on the internet. Uh, outside of those courses. The Herbal Academy has a lot of good and readily available resources that they use. The American Herbalist Guild and these books have a lot of um, resources listed within, within them as well that you can use to make sure that you are getting information from a reputable source. And some of them even have courses that they offer every now and then that are either super discounted or free. Right now, I have a membership to the Herbarium at the Herbal Academy and to the American Herbalist Guild. I, I invested in those. It's about $70 each, which is, for me, like, that's still a hefty investment, but that was for a year membership to each thing. And right now, that is what works for me. So with the American Herbalist Guild. I actually talked with Kaylee from the Honeystead a little bit about this and about getting started into herbalism. If starting a course is not what you can do right now, finding some of those organizations like the American Herbalist Guild that is reputable, has a lot of resources to offer. That membership, as I was looking at it, um, you get access to the journal, you get access to all the articles, you get access to even some courses and intensives, intensives that you can take. I live next to a highway, but it really is unparalleled how much road noise there is when I am trying to film. A lot of stuff is packed into there, so I will link the American Herbalist Guild and the Herbal Academy in the description. There are others. There are so many others out there, and these are just two that I've really connected with and invested in, but there, there are so many others out there. So just do your research, find the one that works for you, find the source that works for you because you know the not every not everyone is the same and there may be something that it's lacking for you and may not be worth the investment I don't know like just just do your research I, I'm here to share my experience in the best way that I can so the YouTube channels I'm watching um, I try not to watch a lot of YouTube I try and fail not to watch a lot of YouTube because that is something I, <laughs> that takes up a lot of my time but when I'm looking for herbal stuff I, I usually go first to um, the Honeystead, Kaylee at the Honeystead has a lot of good, very specific and informative herbal videos, not just about the herbs themselves, but about how to use them and actually goes through the process and shows you the process of making the salves and the tinctures and the fermentations and the decoctions and all of that stuff. So I really enjoy her videos. Also, Amy Fuel has a YouTube channel where she talks about 
herbs. She was the one that did the Homesteaders Herbal Companion and is also the founder of the Homesteaders of America. So, I don't know, it's pretty cool. The Herbal Academy has a YouTube channel as well. They also post a lot of recipes on their Instagram. So if you, if that's something you're interested in, you know, feel free to check that out. How I'm using all of these resources is, <laughs> uh, um, I got, so I, I want to make a Materia Medica, but right now what seemed the easiest for me was to buy a Materia Medica journal. I have seen this on Etsy and it's also on Amazon. And so it's, I think it's adorable. It is very basic, which is what I need. It has the places for the herbs, the information. Can you even see that? Kind of, okay. So it has the places for the herbs, the information, any of the things that you would need to know about this in the future, taste, smell, where you get it from, the properties, the usage, the dosages. And in the back, it has a place to put the formulas that you use for the herbs that you write about in here. So this is, this is, I feel like a good starting place for me because otherwise I'll spend so much time trying to create the perfect aesthetic <laughs> Materia Medica that I won't actually put anything in it. And also one of the things that helps me uh, really understand and remember a lot of this information is observing the plants myself. So we have planted a lot of these herbs that we've been researching and I like to sit and sketch them. It helps me look at the makeup of them, look at the, the petals, the stems, the leaves, and cement in my mental apothecary and mental Materia Medica a bit more detail about how to identify and know what these plants are and what they look like and what their properties and characteristics are. And also it makes me feel super aesthetic and cutesy when I get to sit in my garden and sketch my herbs. So. I, I find that that works the best for me. I do feel very cool going and getting my herbs. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, it feels very aesthetic and like, oh, look at me, I'm getting my herbs. I hope this has been helpful. And I hope that if you are interested in learning about this, that this has provided options, some, some research that you can do, or at least some comfort in knowing that there is a lot out there and it can be overwhelming to try to pick a starting point. So here are some starting points and if, if you have any other resources, any other books that have been really helpful, any stuff that you would like to share, please leave them in the comments. I know there's a ton of stuff that I am not aware of or that I didn't mention in this that would be helpful to myself or other people. So make sure to share that. Like the video if you liked the video and subscribe if you would like to see more herb content, let me know. Let me know if there's something specifically that you would like to learn about or would like to see me struggle to learn about. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye. Thank you.